Hey, uh, welcome, guys. So we keep talking about a compact. Yeah, before I start, I hope you guys subscribe to my channel. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so uh, the video in uh, so previous we already talked about a compact set implied closing bound. So uh, let's proving uh, more about a compact set. <coughs> okay, so theorem. So uh, let's see. So closed subset. Of sub subset of a uh, compact set, I use a CPT is a uh, compact. Okay, so basically, let's say case compact. Then if it's a closed subset of a uh, closed subset, then uh, it's compact. So let's say a case a uh, subset of metric space. So case compact. If f is closed, so closed means the closure is the same as f. Then it's compact. Then f is uh, f is compact. Okay, so uh, this is very easy. So let's suppose that we got some V alpha, right? So this union V alpha will uh, cover F. And uh, so we can add a joint uh, V alpha with the F complement, right? So this will, this will be a compact. This will be a, a cover of K. <clears throat> uh, but because K is compact, because K, com K is compact, so you can find a finite subcover, so you can buy v r one union v alpha two, union v alpha n, which union f c is cover k, right? Okay, so okay, so uh, right, so now uh, we can so from here, right? We know it's cover k, right? So you can actually uh, this, so you can remove, uh, you can remove f o c if it's necessary. Right, so you already get the uh, cover of K, uh, which is cover uh, F, right? So this is finite sub cover. The only uh, part may be this FOC, right? But this is FOC, just one one sub open subset, right? So we can just, just remove it. Then uh, if necessary, you can remove it. If not necessary, if FO, F, FOC already in the F alpha, then sure, uh, already in this V alpha, then sure we don't you, uh, sorry. Yeah, so you can you can just remove it, right? If necessary. So now you get the color of F, right? So find a cover of F, so F is compact. Okay, so theorem. Uh F is close. F is close. And the K is compact. Suppose uh, if it's close and K is compact, then F intersection K is compact. Uh, this is simple, right? Because because I know that the F intersection K, which is close, right? Because we already proved that compact is close, which is subset of compact, right? So by the previous theorem, this guy is compact, okay? Because this intersection of closed set is closed, and then which is a subset of a compact set K, so compact. Okay, so theorem. Yeah, these are a lot of theorem about compact set. I think those are, uh, what I'm saying that's still very, still, I uh, think, very important. So let's say uh, somebody give you a compact set, a collection of compact set, such that every finite collect, finite intersection, or oh, this is theorem is very important. Every finite intersection of K alpha uh, is non empty. Non empty. So what I'm saying is that this alpha can be infinite, right? And then you take any finite of them and you do an intersection with non empty, right? So this is the assumption. Then the could uh the, all of it right all of it is not empty okay so this is very weird right all so these different tell you that uh, there are lots of sets compact sets right and then you pick you pick any of them right if any of them uh every finite of lens its intersection is non empty then total is non empty okay okay so this is not the uh, not true for the open sets you can try by yourself okay Okay, so proof. It's 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 amazing that uh, this this look like a very trivial fact that uh, it seems like this is true, right? Hard to find a counterexample. Yeah, but actually this is related to the property of compact. So which tell you topology is interesting because uh, your intuition actually needs more uh, more to get it. Okay, so let's define let's say define G alpha, which is open to be K alpha complement, right? Okay, so so uh so so wait, I need to prove by contradiction, right? So suppose uh no point 
in K1. Uh, so proof by contradiction means that the intersection is empty, right? So that means, uh, that means uh, no point of K1, no point in K1 belongs to every K, belongs to every K alpha. Okay, so that means, yeah, so this is contradiction, right? So we suppose that the no point in K1 will belongs to every uh, K alpha. Uh, that means what? Right, so that means, uh, so that means, uh, that means this k alpha c except for alpha create a open cover, right? So k one is open cover of this g alpha, right? So uh, except alpha equals to one, right? Uh, okay. Right, I think. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Right. So, uh, let's. So, uh, let's see. Uh, how to see? Uh, how to how to uh see this is true. Right. So, uh, so obviously that uh, so this sentence uh tell me that no point in K one belongs to every K alpha. Right. So, right. So let's see. Uh, if X belongs to K one, right. If x belongs to k1, then x there exists an alpha which x do not do not belong. Right? Otherwise, that uh, x will be. Otherwise, there is the intersection will be empty. It will be non-empty. Right. So for for any point in x in k1, there should be some g x should contain some g alpha. Right. For some alpha. Right. And then you write down everything. You get this. Okay. So you alpha is not except one. Then who cares, right? But you get just some k alpha. Uh, just some g alpha. Okay. So but k1 is uh. Compact, right? So which tell you that the uh, K one will be subset of the let's say G alpha alpha one, G alpha two, G alpha n, right? So which tell you that K one is a subset of K alpha one complement, K alpha two complement of K alpha n complement. Okay, so now uh, you need to finally uh, you need to uh st st you can see the uh contradiction right because because what because that uh now k1 belongs to this subset of this right so you can take k1 intersection with this k alpha one intersection with k alpha two k alpha n okay so this will be empty okay uh this is true right because every k1 every point in k1 will not inside this k right so by contradiction, right? Because I say that every finite intersection should be non-empty. <laughs> Proof that. Okay, so uh Corey. Uh Corey. So this Corey also called also uh very uh, commonly used. Suppose you get some compact sets, which is K1 intersection with K uh union uh, uh sorry, K1 is a K2 is subset of K1, K3 is subset of K2. And you get a series of the compact set, and then the, the first guy is now empty, right? So then the, uh, the intersection of all, right, by the previous zero, all this compact set, and any a finite of lanes is now empty. I I should, I should say all of K one should should be now empty. Okay, well, I are are now empty. Then you're guaranteed that any finite collection will be now empty, right? Because any finite collection will be the smallest. K, so more is n, right? So the, this intersection, the so by the previous theorem, the total intersection is non-empty. Okay. Oh, sorry. What the hell is going on? Okay, so uh, let's keep going. So theorem. So uh, so if E is an infinite subset of convex K, so if E is a complex subset of convex set and e, the cardinality of E is infinite, then E has a it has a living point in K. Okay, so uh, what I already say what's the limit point, right? Limit point means that there is a point, and uh, for any open neighborhood, it covers uh, its intersection with original uh, E. 
uh, must be non empty except for that point itself, except for the point itself. Okay, so this is called limit point. So E has a limit point in K. Uh, why? So proof. Uh, suppose not. Suppose no limit point. No, no limit point. No, no limit point of K is uh, where a limit point of E. Okay, so uh, then for each Q belongs to K, right? You can create a open neighborhood, they call it VQ. Okay, and so this VQ, right? Since Q is not not limit point in K, and uh, Q is not limit point of E, right? So VQ contains only finite points. So you can contain finite points of E, right? So VQ contains finite point of E. Okay, but E is infinite, right? E is infinite. So no, no any, no any finite cover of VQ. No, any finite cover of VQ covers E, right? But this is a contradiction because K is compact, <coughs> right? So come contradiction, right? Because now uh, this is K, right? I create each ball. And what you are saying is that, uh, what you are saying is that this open neighborhood, this open neighborhood con always contains the, each open neighborhood contains finite point of E, right? So a finite of lamp cannot cover E. Right, but the uh, E, but its K is larger than E, right? So it cannot cover its K. But K is compact, so any cover should be, any open cover should have finite subcover, which is a uh, leads to a contradiction. Okay, so uh, now we go back to the re the real dimension, the, the UKDD line, okay? So it's iron is an interval, it's an interval in R, R1. Okay, so what um interval uh yeah yeah so this uh this interval should be should be close okay so iron should look like a n and b n right so let's I you know assume that iron is uh iron plus one subset of iron and keep going right and uh, i uh i so iron and from one to infinity is now empty so this is the result. So, so this is looks stupid, right? Let's say that you get some interval as i1 and you get some interval i2 and you give i3 and that, that, that you finally will always contains a point, right? Intuitive. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this looks stupid, right? But the whole, uh, you can use the previous theorem, right? You can use previous theorem to prove that, right? Uh, but uh, if you want to prove that, you need to prove that uh, this closed interval is uh, compact. Actually, we did not prove it. Okay, so suppose we don't know it's compact. Uh, then you can uh, you can write as this. Uh, you can uh, directly prove it. So you you have this right. So you know that a n is less than a n plus n plus n and a so b plus n b n plus n b n b n right from this interval. Okay. And uh, and uh, what what? Mm, right. Yeah. So, uh, this is the the observation from this, right? But let's let's assume. Uh, let's see this. Let's define. Uh, let's define x. Right? Let's define x to be. Mm, let's let's maybe do this. Okay, so right, so I I, I assume this a and b n right. So so I know that uh, I know that uh, this a n will increasing and the b n will decrease. Okay, and a n is is bounded above, it's bounded above, and the b n is bounded below, right? Because there are keep in shrinking, right? Shrinking, shrinking. So uh, by the completeness, completeness. Uh, by complaint is means that uh, this a n will converge, right? so a n will converge to some points, b n will converge to the point b, right? And uh, we uh, we uh, a this a right will belongs to this will be will belongs to it, right? Why? Because the this a is bounded by b, <laughs> so this a is bounded by b, and then this b is larger than a. Right, so it convert once I prove it converge, then you always then it will come, they will start to emerge in points, 
at some point. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and by this construction, we see that uh, this A uh, belongs to I, I, M, right? For M equals to one to three, right? Because start from here and string it here, 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 here. Right? So this A will be some point here, which is uh, in the final results. So basically what, you, what we are using is the completeness results. Okay, so from here you can see that uh, you can generate to n-dimensional, right? So uh, which you get some n-dimensional Q and then you have this. Once you have this, then you can easily show this. Right? Okay. Just n-dimensional. Okay, so uh, from this, our theorem can say that uh, so every K cube so k-dimensional cube uh, is compact. Okay, so this is the hard hardcore part, right? Because somehow, like we don't, uh, we don't. Uh, now we we need to prove in a real k the n k dimension, right? So somehow, like we have to prove this, uh, prove this rigorously. Uh, yeah. Okay. So probably this is the the, the most difficult part. Uh, use the definition in R R N right to prove it. Okay. Okay. So uh yeah. So let's say uh we get some k cell k k cube. Okay. So k cube just some cube in the R R K dimension. Okay. So some finite cube. And then let's say we contain some points. Let's say x one x n such that this s j is greater or equal to a j smallest of b j. Okay. Then you can put the delta be the the Diagonal part, so it's bj j square j from one to n. I think maybe you take a square root. So it is k. Okay. Okay. So what, what you you can see is that uh, if uh, so uh, you can see that uh, this is distance is the largest one, right? So for any x and y belongs to this cube i, the uh, x and y distance is less than delta. Okay. So let's say we get some open coverage alpha, right? We get some open coverage alpha. So we get lots of open coverage which cover this cube. Uh, okay, so we get some open coverage. Let's say we get some open coverage alpha, which cover this cube. Okay, so uh and the no sub no finite sub cover, right? So no finite sub cover. Okay, so now uh we can do the we can do a trick, right? We put cj equals to aj plus bj divided by two. Okay, so now uh, here comes the trick, right? So from here, that's, you can consider A, J, and C, J, and the C, J, and B, J. Right? So basically, once you do this uh, by sector, right, you, 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 get a, you separate the original K cube into two to the K cube. Okay. Okay, so... Okay, so, right, so you get... Two to the k cube. So let's label this by uh, let's say i. Um, I mean i. I use i i i q right. So we get some g alpha alpha cover i cover is i q with q from one to two to the k. Okay. So the problem is that by uh, my assumption, I say no finite sub cover of g alpha can cover i right. So that means there exists some q such that uh, the there's no finite sub cover can cover that one right. Because if each if each of i q can be covered by finite of G alpha, then their union will be covered by finite collection. So what I'm saying is that there exists uh, uh, I, Q, which cannot be covered by finite collection of collection of E, right? Okay, so once uh, once you believe, uh, once you uh, see this, then the, that's you're gonna get I one, right? And you keep going, you bisect I one, and then you say, oh, there's I two, da 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 da. Okay, so you get I in this I cover I one and cover I two. Okay, so finally the uh, the distance will shrink, to, uh, the this the diagonal distance will shrink to infinity, and then finally you will get some point which is called x, right? By, by definition, this x is non, like by, def, by previous theorem, this is non empty, right? So I get x, I put x, right? Which belongs to OI, right? Which belongs to 
O uh, O I. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh. Okay. So now here's a trick, right? So, so this X, right, still uh belongs to this G alpha, right? So there exists some G which cover X, right? So G exists some G cover X, right? But uh, this is open, right? So X can create a small ball, which is a uh, we can create a small ball with radius R, right? Such that uh, this right this ball sit in G alpha. Okay, so there exists alpha, right? And uh, but notice that this i, the diagonal i, can be shrinking to infinity, actually shrinking to zero, right? So that means you can create another cube inside x, right? So now now you see the mathematician is really smart, right? So you can create a very small ball, small cube, right, which is sit inside this ball, because this i can be any uh, arbitrary small, right? But the problem is that this contradiction because i is covered by this i is covered by g alpha itself. So I saw contradiction with the contradiction with the previous result that we say the uh, we say this right. So this i, so there exists some i right. Maybe i find i k or something, which i k, uh, by uh, covered by single g alpha. Right? But my assumption is any i cannot be covered by finite arbitrary sub -cover. Uh, sorry, cannot be covered by finite open set. Okay, so contradiction. Oh, so this is compact. Uh, yeah, so we finally proved that a closed cube, closed K cube, is compact. Yeah, so you know your standard Euclidean uh, dimension. Okay. Okay, so finally uh, we proved the results. Henry Borel's theory. Yeah, so probably this is the, the first part, uh, the first uh, famous part in the, uh, you know, uh, like the elementary analysis. Okay, so what he's saying is that uh, in the Euclidean space, complex compact, if we only if close and bounded. Yeah, so this is very powerful resource uh, because hard somehow people cannot in general metric space hard to prove something is compact right? but uh, in the uk median space close and bounding price compact so what we originally already is already proved is that the uh, compact implies a uh, close and bound right so this is uh, my previous video so complex implies close and bound okay and then what okay so now uh, we need to uh we need to go 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 back. We need to say close and bound. Hope to uh, imply compact. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, not only that, not only that, we need to uh yeah, but this is hard to prove. Okay, so we uh we introduce another one. So let's prove it. So let's write uh, as A B C. So A is a uh, A is uh, close uh A is K is close and bound. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is that there is an idea called a sequentially compact. I didn't talk, talk in this video. Maybe I'll talk in the future. So K is close and bound. The second is that K is compact. And uh, the C is that every uh, infinite subset of E, so every infinite subset of K, so every infinite subset of K has a limit point in K. Okay, so this uh this is called in the uh, mathematical it's called sequentially compact. Okay, so basically you given uh or given any in, in, in sequence or something that that sequence will have some will have the limit and that limit must inside k. There exists this finite uh subsequence converse subsequence. Okay, so okay, so yeah, so this is my uh we need to prove uh three of them are equivalent. Okay, so this is our goal. Yeah, so uh, this this C can be viewed as yeah, uh, the idea called sequential compact. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I already I already proved that uh, B implies A, right? And I previous maybe ten minutes we proved that C implies uh, B implies uh, C. 
Okay, and uh, so from here, uh, we can easily see that. Uh, okay, so by the previous result, uh, we can say that. Uh, so if k is if so if a is true, right, then k is closed and bound. That means k is covered by some cube, right? About the cube is compact. So the uh, this is so if k is closed means that it's a closed subset of a compact set. So k is compact. Yeah. So we prove a. Uh, implies b. Okay, so let me write down because uh, because this cube is compact, right? So cube is compact, and the k is a subset. Uh, k is a subset of uh, uh, k is a closed subset, closed subset of compact, right? So by previous results that uh, yeah, so we prove this. Okay, so now we prove that a and b are same, right? So finally, we need to prove that c implies a. Right, because I didn't prove that the C implies A, right? Okay, so final results that every infinite subset of E has a limit point in E. Okay. Okay, so suppose so I need to prove C implies A, right? So suppose E is a uh, let's say suppose K, so we're not, not E, K is not bounded. Uh then right, so then uh, you can find n right for any in, uh, positive integer such that xn can be arbitrarily large, right? So xn can be greater than n, right? Okay, so uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, so from this, right? If you get a sequence of this, that you take s, right? Be the, this xn around one to two to infinity, right? So this s is infinite set, right? Because at x need to be arbitrarily large, but the, here it can be arbitrary infinite, uh, arbitrary large, right? So there's no limit point s, no. No limit point in S, so no limit point in K, right? But so contradiction, so K must be bounded. Okay, so which is a uh, which I prove that the sequentially compact implies a uh, bounded, right? Implies bounded. But I didn't, but somehow I didn't, I didn't. Uh, so the remaining is that I need to prove that uh, this implies close, right? So this is the remaining. So I need to prove it's close. So suppose k is not close. So now you see the proof, the power of the proof of contradiction, right? Maybe whole video use the proof of contradiction. Suppose k is not compact. Oh, sorry, suppose k is not close. So let's see. Uh, suppose k is not close, right? So that means uh, that means what? There is a uh, k is not close, right? That means uh, there is a point so which, which is the limit point, but not inside K, right? Because close means that it, 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 it contains all its limit points. Mm -hmm. So there is this point X belongs to uh, X zero is a limit point of K. But not inside K. Okay, so Right, so by definition, right? So by definition, uh, you can create, I mean, for any n, right, greater than zero, you can create uh, a point uh, xn, right? So which xn, because it is a limit point, right? So you can create xn, which is inside k, such that uh, for any n greater than zero, this xn minus x zero is less than one over n, right? So basically this x zero, this is k. Right, and then this x zero is arbitrary close to k because, but it's not inside k. You can create a radius one over n and then find a point in k, right? Because it's a limit point. You call it x n, such that x zero minus x n is less than one over n, right? For a, for every n, so then you create s, which is called x n from one to two to infinity, right? So this s n s is infinite set, right? Because once you uh, arbitrary close, you need to find a new point, right? So S is infinite set. And by my assumption is that uh, S should be some, have a limit point in K, right? So why is the limit point in, in this case? It's X zero, right? So X zeros need to be in S, right? But the, my assumption is that need to be in K. Right? So contradiction. Uh, yeah, so Somehow, like, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so x, so x zero is a limit point, right? So, 
what, what, what I'm saying is that uh, any infinite subset of k, right? So now S is an infinite subset of k, and then that has must have a limit point in k. Right, but S is only one limit point, which is x0, right? X0 should be k, but I say x0 is not in k, so contradiction. Right, so the original assumption is true. There's no points uh, uh, of k, which is but not in k. Yeah. Done. Okay, so what I need to mention the thing is that, uh, so basically we prove, we, so we prove what? We prove in the Euclidean space, compact if and only if k is uh, sequentially compact. So sequential compact is what it says that uh, you take any sequential, uh, any points, uh, any sub, uh, any c c c uh, sequence, and then you can find a so-called, uh, yeah, basically you can find a limit point, okay. Which limit point should in K. Okay. And uh, also we proved that, that it is in price close and bound. bound. Okay. But uh, actually, yeah, so in the general, let me just mention maybe I will not, I will prove in uh, maybe in a future video, but not in this uh, analysis. In general, these two are the same, our equivalents are the same in general matrix space. So in order to prove this, you need to uh, use called the back big set, which is a very difficult, uh, somehow very non-trivial non, non idea. I prove in my other videos, I will post a link below. And uh, and uh, actually, and also close amount to not imply complex, compact in a general uh, matrix space. So remember that compact compact implies goes and bound, but goes and bound to not imply it do not implies compact. Yeah. So this is all my wonders to know about compact. Next time we talk about perfect set. See you guys next video.